This right here is the KickPi K2B development board. You can find it in some smart TV boxes, but you can also just buy the board online for around 30 bucks. So what we're gonna do is instead of buying an Android TV off the shelf with all the pre-configured bloat, we're just gonna build our own from scratch. KickPi sent me this board and said I could do whatever I wanted with it. And I saw that they had an Android build, so it reminded me of back in the day before I was a grizzled IT vet, I used to love customizing my Galaxy Note 5. Now I've gotten used to the bland default settings of every UI I encounter. After getting the KickPi and installing their build of Android 12 on it, I decided to check out the forums and see what the Android community was up to in terms of customization. But let's go over the hardware for this KickPi K2B board really quick. The chip is the All Winner H618. It's a relatively low power quad core chip. It's meant to run 24 seven, you know, streaming sites, YouTube, music, and maybe some very light gaming, but we'll test all of that out. For RAM, you have the option of one gig, two gig, and four gigs of DDR4. I have the two gig model. It has a gigabit ethernet, a 4K60 HDMI output, two USB USB 2.0s, 5 volt USB-C power connector, and a 20 pin connector over here. Oh, and I forgot to mention, on the KickPi site, they also have an Ubuntu build for it. But of course, I went with the Android 12 build because I wanted to make an Android TV. But if you wanted to just use it as like a 2D game emulator, you could slap Ubuntu on it and get to going. All right, so here is my setup here. So I've got my KickPi, I've got my HDMI going to my monitor up here that I'm testing on. I've got my power connected here with my Raspberry Pi power supply. And in this USB port, I have my little USB hub here with my keyboard receiver and also a flash drive just for transferring files mostly. There is some storage on the SD card in here that I have, a 32 gig. There's not a lot of storage left on it though. I didn't want to cram it up. I didn't want to have to keep taking out the OS drive and popping it into my desktop and transferring files that way. So I just decided to hook it up with this flash drive here so I could just kind of pull it out, put files on it, move it back keep it simple. And the software stack that I'm using is pretty basic. Here is what the just default Android 12 build looks like out of the box. Nothing special. But as you can see here, I installed Nova Launcher. The other application I'm using is Custom LWP. And we'll go over these later and how they work together. The rest were APKs I just imported with my flash drive. So the goal of this was to kind of just make my own Android TV from scratch with just what I want on it, no bloat. So I picked a couple of things that I liked. I wanted to make sure I had a terminal, a game emulator, YouTube, some sports streaming, music of course, and maybe like a nice clean dashboard that showed me some relevant information that I'd want to see. And the first layer of the software stack is the Nova launcher right here. If you're not sure what a launcher is in the Android world, it's just like a different UI. So you have your default UI, that may be a little bit locked down depending on you know who made the phone or who made the OS, but you can load on a different launcher and launch that by default with a little bit more customization available to you. And the Nova launcher is a very popular one. And then the next layer is this custom LWP application here. And this application allows you to kind of make your own front end that the launcher can use. So I go into custom LWP, I put the icons where I want them. I can run scripts that tell me stats like the CPU usage and RAM usage. I can have it pull some RSS feeds and show me some headlines of the day. And I can make it so my home screen only shows the applications that I wanna run. And of course, with zero added bloat. Let me show you what it looks like in action. This KickPi K2B SBC is the perfect little budget board. It's gonna be something you're not really gonna be worried about running 24 seven. It's gonna sip power. It's gonna do pretty much what a Raspberry Pi 3 can do. The price is competitive. Hopefully it has a little bit more support from the open source community. What would you recommend around that same price point? Let me know in the comments. Oh, and if you're looking to get your own KickPi, check out the links down below. If you're looking for something with a little bit more power that can do a little bit more video encoding and maybe more gaming, check out this video. Peace.